She was a virtuous woman, a loyal woman. Where thou goest, I will go. A dedicated, committed, and sacrificial woman. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. An outstanding woman of God. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Join the Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint for an in-depth look at the book of Ruth and exposing issues related to love and marriage, religion and culture, wealth and poverty, hardship and pain, joy and sorrow. This and every Wednesday night at 7.30 for a brand new Bible study series entitled The Truth About Ruth. The Truth About Ruth, Wednesday nights at 7.30. Welcome to the online Bible study series of the Edgewater Waterford Circuit of Baptist Churches in St. Catherine, Jamaica. And a special welcome to those viewing from overseas. May we all be edified and enlightened from God's Word today. But before we proceed, let us pray. All-powerful, all-knowing God, we thank you for again affording us the privilege of studying your word. We ask, good Lord, that you guide and guard our thoughts as we do so. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you who have been following this series with us online. You know that the last time we examined this topic, the truth about Ruth, we focused on episode 20 coming to us from the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 3, verse 12 through to verse 15. And in so doing, we noted that we were actually in part two of a three-part look at this segment or section of Ruth chapter three, subtitled Response and Reaction. Response and Reaction. And so last time, we noted the intense and informative dialogue which took place between Boaz and Ruth in the night. And out of that discussion, that dialogue, we noted that the following became quite evident. First of all, a marvelous admission found in verse 12. Indeed, the admission came from Boaz, and in that admission, he admitted first of all who he was and then who he was not. Who he was in regards to the fact that he was indeed a kingsman redeemer of Ruth. But who he was not, he admitted that he was not the nearest kingsman redeemer to her. That someone really already occupied that position. Someone would be in that role and it was not him, at least not yet. And of course, what we were doing was highlighting this marvelous admission by Boaz, admitting who he was, admitting who he was not. Secondly, we noted last time a gracious submission found in verse 13. Because in verse 13, he actually went on to say that he was willing to consult that person, that gentleman before. And if that Kingsman Redeemer was not willing to, as it were, step up to the plate, then he, Boaz, would do so. He 
was willing to submit to that role. And what we noted in so doing last time is that it amounted to the fact that Boaz was a principled man. He was not willing to skip the line. He was not willing to shortcut the process. He was not willing to do any under the table, underhand type of a deal. He wanted and was willing to follow the protocol. The protocol. The custom, the culture, the protocol. He was a principled man. But he was also a patient man. Because you would have seen that out of all of that, he, 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 he was willing to step aside and wait until the nearest Kingsman Redeemer went through the process, went through all that was required before he would step in to take that position. Principled man, patient man. And of course, we explored all the other possibilities surrounding that incident. But thirdly, we noted last time a cautious instruction. A cautious instruction found in verse 13 and verse 14, where Boaz went on to say to Ruth, Ruth, it is night, it is dark, it is in the wee hours of the morning. Ruth, you stay here. Don't go on the road. Don't go out in the dark further like that. Stay right here for the sake of caution. And what we're saying there is that he was highlighting the importance of safety. Of safety. But he went on to say, that she should ensure that she left before anybody else woke up in the morning for the sake of integrity. He did not want her name or his name to be scandalized. He did not want persons to be saying things that they should not be saying in regards to that scenario. He was being super cautious for the sake of of safety and the sake of integrity. But then we closed by noting a generous donation. Donation coming, of course, from Boaz. The Bible says he measured six measures of barley, laid it on her, and sent her on her way. What a donation from Boaz to Ruth and her family. And so that in essence was our study as we sort of focused in some way on the donor himself and the donation itself. But in essence, all of that transpired that night when Ruth visited Boaz. Indeed, the story continues to be even more interesting and intriguing. Tonight, we now fast forward to episode 21 of our series, The Truth About Ruth. And tonight, episode 21 takes us to chapter 3 that we have been in over the past couple of weeks. But tonight, verse 16 through to verse 18. So it's Ruth chapter 3, verse 16 to verse 18. And tonight I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Only three verses from the NIV. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her and added, He gave me these six measures of barley 
saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens, for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, last time we looked at this chapter, Ruth was in the barley field in a rural area of Judah. She went there to speak to Boaz. She went there to see Boaz. And she went there, or should I say, ended up being there for only one night. Now, she had gone there as an act of obedience to Naomi, her mother-in-law. Remember, it is Naomi who came up with this grand idea. It is Naomi who instructed Ruth to go to visit Boaz. It is Naomi who actually led Ruth on this path. Now in this text, we find Ruth back in the city, the city of Bethlehem and the home of Naomi. She had gone to visit Boaz. Then she left early in the morning, remember? Before anybody else got up that morning. And she returns home to Naomi. What we are finding here in our text, therefore, tonight, is that Ruth is in dialogue with Naomi. They are talking to each other. They are discussing matters with each other. And even though this text is notably a very short text, we are able to glean, no pun intended, glean from this short text some things that I regard as noteworthy about Naomi. Now, you remember that I have been saying almost from day one that in more ways than one, the story found in the book of Ruth had more to do with Naomi's actions and intentions than anything else. Yet still, the book is called Ruth. And as we wind up, as we close out chapter 3, we are seeing Naomi being the focus of attention again. Don't worry. In chapter 4, Ruth will become the center of attention. And in fact, the book will end focusing in many ways on her. But for the time being, as we close off chapter 3, we are seeing Naomi being the focus of attention and there are three things I'd like to highlight coming from this short text tonight. Number one, the inquiry she made, the inquiry she made found in the first part of verse 16. Let me read it for, for us again. When Ruth came to her mother in law, Naomi asked her. How did it go, my daughter? How did it go? Interesting question, no doubt. How did it go, my daughter? And the reason I've read from the NIV is the King James sort of puts it in a way that in my mind does not go to the heart of the matter. Using, of course, the ancient ways of speaking in the in King James days. But in essence, it was a question coming from Naomi to Ruth. 
How did it go, my daughter? Possibly, possibly, Naomi asked Ruth that question based on either of bo or both of the following realities. First of all, it is possible, I put it to us, that Naomi asked that question based on or because of her motherly concern. As the mother-in-law of Ruth, she quite likely asked this question because she was genuinely concerned about Ruth and especially in regards to what transpired or could have transpired in that short visit out of a motherly concern. And those of you who are mothers, mother-in-laws or mothers-in-law, you perhaps would understand more than many others how this would have transpired. You would understand the heart of the matter. You'd understand the passion and the concern, the deep concern that would be coming from Naomi. It quite likely came from a heart from a motherly perspective. She was concerned about Ruth. One can only imagine that perhaps throughout that night, Naomi was thinking, pondering, wondering what was transpiring, how things were working out, if things were okay. She perhaps was wondering, was Ruth safe, having left the city and now gone again into the rural area, was she okay? How did things pan out? But also, I put it to us that quite likely Naomi asked Ruth that question based on her mere curiosity. She was not only concerned as a mother, but behind it all, she was just simply curious. And this is a natural outworking, is it not? That many times we are just curious, curious, just curious to find out how things happen, what happened, how did things um, transpire, what were some of the issues and incidents, what were some of the, 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 the occurrences that took place for a host of reasons. She could have been simply curious. So she asked her daughter-in-law, Ruth, how did things go? The reason I'm emphasizing this is that this is human. This is how we are as individuals. This is how we are wired. This is how we are made up. And like a normal human being, like a curious human being, Naomi perhaps asked that question. But you know, from that question, she learned something that she perhaps would not have known if she never asked and, would, and, and, and not told. Because now we go to our second major observation from the passage. Not only do we see the inquiry she made, but next, the information she received. Found in the second part of verse 16 through to verse 17. Let me read it for us again. It says that then she told her, that's Ruth, told Naomi everything that Boaz had done for her and added he gave me these six measures of barley, saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Isn't that interesting? That out of the question that 
Naomi asks a simple question, straightforward question, significant question. She was able to get this information coming from Ruth in regards to what Boaz had done. I put it to us, beloved, that this bit of information both confirmed and affirmed at least two things about Boaz. And these two things I said affirmed and, and confirmed because we, 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 we got glimpses of this already in the earlier parts of chapter 3. First of all, his thoughtfulness. And next, his kindness. That in the midst of all of that encounter, that that, that in the we hours of the morning there, we are in the we hours of the night and the morning, we are finding him face to face, as it were, with Ruth. Naomi is not there. But out of his thoughtfulness, he thinks about Naomi, the mother-in-law of Ruth, how she's doing, how she's coping. And out of that, his act of kindness is shown in sending this barley, a mount of barley, via Ruth to Naomi, her mother-in-law. Thoughtfulness and kindness comes out again, shows up again in regards to Boaz. Now, for those who do not know or those who may have forgotten, you're talking about six measures of barley. In essence, you're talking about, and, and, and fasten your seatbelts because this is huge. You're talking about nearly 50 pounds of barley. 50 pounds of barley. And, and, and you can work it out in terms of Ruth taking all of that by herself. I don't want to go into the intricacies of that. But the point is, he was being very generous to Naomi. He was being very thoughtful about Naomi. And he sought to do something about it. He was not just a man who thought about these things, but he acted it out. He, he was not only a man of faith, but a man of action. And he, he, he did everything possible by ensuring that Naomi received this, he actually gave it to Ruth to give to Naomi to supply for her household. What thoughtfulness and kindness on the part of boys. And sometimes, beloved, that's how life works out, doesn't it? I'm not sure that Naomi even thought of this possibility that out of this should receive so much barley in one day. But isn't that how life is? That sometimes when you least expect it, the least expected time and from the least expected place, sometimes even person, you get provision, you get kindness, you get thoughtfulness. That's how life is. And therefore, we must never ever try to really predict how God is going to open doors. We must never ever try to, 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 to you know, overthink how God is going to work things out. God has a way of providing sometimes at the least expected time through the least expected means, from the least expected place, and sometimes even person. God is awesome. God is in control over everything. He is indeed the awesome God. And he's able to do whatever he wants to do. So, out of this dialogue 
between Naomi and Ruth when Ruth returned home to Bethlehem. We are seeing not only the inquiry she made, how did things go, Ruth? But now we are also seeing the information she received, act of kindness from Boaz and thoughtfulness, which leads us to the third and final uh, major observation from the text. And I put it this way, the instruction she gave. Again, we are seeing Ruth, sorry, Naomi, instructing Ruth. And this goes on really in much of the book of Ruth. And this chapter closes with Naomi again instructing Ruth in verse 18. It reads as follows. Then Naomi said, Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. For the man will not rest, talking about boys, until the matter is settled today. In essence, beloved, I believe that Naomi sought to encourage Ruth to be the following. Firstly, to be patient. Wait. Be patient, Ruth. We know that perhaps, you know, you would like things to be done quickly. And, and I dare say that Naomi perhaps also had a bit of impatience about her too. But she's now saying to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, Wait. Be patient. And sometimes this is our downfall, is it not? That we become impatient. Naomi was instructing Ruth above everything to be patient, but also to be observant. She said to her, wait until you find out what happens. So while you are waiting, be observant. While you are waiting, be looking out for change. While you are waiting, keep your eyes open as it were. It reminds me of what Jesus said to his three disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. When the others had um, been sent away, he said to them, watch and pray. It speaks of being observant. That while you are they are being patiently waiting on the Lord. Be watching for what the God is about to do. And, and the third thing I think that Naomi was in, in essence saying in this instruction was for her to be expectant. To her to be expectant. That at any time now things could turn around for you, Ruth. Any time now you could find yourself in a situation that will simply astound you. Anytime now, God could turn things around. And, and the fourth thing was that you should be confident, Ruth. Be confident about all of this. As you are patient, observant, expectant, remain confident. Because the man will not rest, she said, until the matter is dealt with. She had confidence in Boaz, but ultimately in God, that God would turn things around. I, I want to use this situation that we find in this text to speak to somebody tonight. Maybe somebody who is facing a situation that seems insurmountable. Maybe someone who would love to see positive change take place. Maybe someone who is sick and tired of being sick and tired. Be patient. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Be observant. Be expectant. Be confident. Be confident that things will eventually turn 
around because that is the God we serve, right? That, that, that things will not always be the way they are now. Things will come to pass. There will come a time when you get your breakthrough. And that is the story of Ruth, is it not? That is the story of God's interaction with human beings, is it not? That God in his own time will turn things around. So as Naomi was intimating and suggesting to Ruth, I put it to us tonight, whatever situation you may be in, be patient, be observant, be expectant. Be confident. Be confident. What are some takeaways from our study tonight? First of all, acts of thoughtfulness and kindness may sometimes occur at the least expected times and at the least ex expected places. That's a reality. So here's my little thing. Expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. But, but also, as another takeaway, sometimes the best thing we can do is do nothing else but wait and watch what the Lord is doing. Sometimes the best thing we can do is do nothing but just simply wait and watch what the Lord is it's doing. Sometimes we get in the way. Sometimes we believe we have to always be doing something for things to happen in our favor. Sometimes the best thing to do is to do nothing. There are two questions I'd like to leave with you. Questions for you to ponder over the next couple of days. First one. How open are you to assistance at unexpected times and from unexpected places? How open? And, 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 and then finally, how patient are you on others and on the Lord? How really patient are we on the Lord? We sing it. We talk about it. We quote the scripture from Isaiah. How patient are we really? Speaking about patience and all of that, I'll be waiting on those who are so desirous to send their responses, questions, or comments. And you may do so to the following email address, as others have done. The Truth About Ruth 2022 at gmail.com. The Truth About Ruth 2022 at gmail.com. And our prayer and the counseling hotline number. Is 876-220-6474 And as I close, please join me in prayer. Of course, Lord, your word has challenged us tonight. Primarily about patience as we wait upon you. We confess our impatience at times. We confess our desire to take things into our own hands. We confess, Lord, that we sometimes feel as if nothing is happening because we do not see what is happening. But tonight we reaffirm our faith, our trust, our confidence in you. 
knowing God that you are always at work and you are always doing things in your own way, in your own time. So teach us, Lord, truly how to wait. We thank you for the provisions of your hands that you have granted unto us and given to us through the thoughtfulness and kindness of others. Tonight, we reaffirm our faith by waiting on you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube page. If you desire prayer and counseling, please call our prayer and counseling hotline at 876-220-6474. Continue to pray for each other. Have a blessed week in the Lord.